everybody's asking for a podcast with the two of us. I guess this is as close to a start as I could think of, right? Oh, and it's it's gonna be so great, and it's gonna be a beat. <laughs> Auspicious ah. beginning uh, no, to podcasting. Yeah. So uh, Jason Murphy and I, uh, if you're unfamiliar, we host a, a, a show called The Modern Rogue. We hosted a TV show called Hacking the System. Um, uh, and uh, we're doing this uh, partly because everybody wants us to do a podcast, but also partly because uh, one of our friends, our very good friends, is uh, here. In fact, I'm going to wait until his name showed up because my favorite moment of playing this game was when in the main credits, like like the fourth or fifth credit was lead audio engineer, I believe, or, or director uh, was Rob Crackle, a friend of ours. Yes. Um, and uh, we, of course, both loved the original The Last of Us. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you what, while we're, while we're getting set up for that, and by the way, get ready for us to cheer for Rob. Uh, you, you were a fan of the first one, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the first one was incredible. Uh, it was one of the greatest games of the generation. Uh, really poignant uh, story with one of the best endings of all time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we we talked about this a little bit uh, in that uh, what I loved about the ending of the first one is that you spent the whole game thinking that your job was to save the world. And in the very last moments, you realized that, no, your job is to save Joel. And and yeah. it's him who needed to be redeemed. Now, how how similar? Because I I have not played Red Dead Redemption or or the sequel, but I know you love both of those. Uh, I, oh yeah, I, I I imagine they 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 touch a lot of similar you know heartstrings and stuff. Uh, yeah, in a lot of ways they do. I mean, in the first one, you're you're fighting for your family, uh, and in the sequel, which is a prequel, you're fighting for, uh, you're watching the dissolution of your family, and uh, both of them are really about uh, uh, masculinity, and also more importantly and closely tied to this and to The Last of Us too, especially uh, the uh, consequences. You Rob know, Crackle, the cycle there of it is. There it is. Whoa! Rob Crackle. Woo! Yay! Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, so now yeah. we can go back to showing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, God, you know, if I can uh, talk about Rob and lead audio and I told him this, this game has, in my opinion, the best audio, the best use of sound in maybe any video game I've ever played. Uh, uh, well, as, a as a matter of fact, I, be I believe it was fairly groundbreaking. I didn't experience it, but I was told that you could be fully visually impaired and play through the entire game. Like, uh, uh, that's staggering be, be, because there, there's all of these things that you could, the switches you can flip that will cause, you know, like, like you to hear things approaching and know when to react and know when to fight or know when you're getting close to, to, to stuff. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it, it reminded me a lot of, uh, the use of sound and how you have to utilize it. it reminded me a lot of, uh, System Shock 2, which is really my high watermark for audio in, uh, in gameplay. Silence you know, because, the Discord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're crouching behind something and going, okay, I can hear a camera here. I can, you know, in System Shock 2, it's like, and I can hear, you know, uh, join the many over yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, this was that, and, and you had to listen in this to determine what types of monsters, because that would determine, like, you treated clickers differently from runners and runners differently from bloaters. Uh, like, if it was and, a uh, runner. What was it, hunters? Uh, like, 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 oh, uh, yeah. the moment you entered uh, anything with hunters, I knew my technique was to run around in circles. <laughs> like, just just <laughs> keep running and then, and then just melee whoever I could uh, 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 get to. Uh, but but I, yeah. I, 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 I came around. It was so. So I guess if we're going to summarize the first game real quick, uh, first game is uh, uh, you've got uh, there is a, uh, an actual fungus uh, and this is in real life that infects the brains of ants and causes them to be directed and go insane. And and it's a parasite or whatever. And the idea is, is what if that that you know, crossed over to humans and uh, <laughs> opening seed uh, for me of, again, we're still talking about episode one, 
uh, uh, pretty close, pretty close. Uh, fourteen year old daughter, work a dad comes home, good relationship, the world goes crazy. In Austin, like I was fine up until I started recognizing city names and ranch roads, <laughs> and then I was like, I was like. Oh, I can't. I don't know if I can. And then you end up playing, and and so the uh, the spoiler is um, uh, Joel loses his fourteen year old daughter at the time, and then uh, like and, in and the opening scene, two two of his editors get killed as well, like right away. <laughs> the uh, uh, his uh, but 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 you watch her die right at the beginning, and um. Uh, and, and 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 then and then he and then it just smash cuts to twenty years later. He's a broken alcoholic smuggler. But uh, we've got this one opening scene right here that is so uh, so so basically, first game is is move the MacGuffin that happens to be an immune fourteen year old girl from point A to point B to save the world. You get there, and over that time, he learns to love again and perceive her as a surrogate daughter. Uh, and then there comes this moment where they're like, yeah, cool, thanks for the kid. We're gonna harvest her brain and kill her now so that we can work on a vaccine. And he's like, I can't do that. And uh, when I played the game, uh, there came this moment that, uh, that I'm like, no, no, you can't do that. And I went in and I just murdered everybody in the room and then stole her and then ran off. Uh, which is how it ends, but it was it wasn't until months later that I found out that it was possible to not, out of spite, murder all the orderlies, all of the nurses, all of the. You only had to kill one person, <laughs> the the doctor who is threatening you. But I definitely murdered everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I uh, I didn't know that either. I turned that hospital into an abattoir. <laughs> right. It was just piles of bodies. So, uh, and uh, and then basically uh, the big twist is that it, it plays like a, a multi-million dollar, you know, uh, Transformers style action thriller up until that moment. And it ends like an indie movie where, where he says, he lies to her and says, um, yeah, uh, turns out, turns out there's tons of people who are immune. Don't worry about it. Uh, and and she says, uh, swear to me, swear to me that's true. And you see that that Joel, for the first time in 20 years, has opened his heart, and he just full on lies and says, uh, yeah, I swear. And that's how the first one ends, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh man. In fact, I think after I played this game, I told you not to play it after I, played the first <laughs> I believe <one>. that <laughs> i think i did i i think i was like oh yeah brian doesn't need to go anywhere near this this is this is gonna get in there uh, he's gonna get his hooks in him it's like i don't have daughters and it hurt uh, <laughs> and so no, i was it, afraid it, the same for you whereas for me i found the first episode as a story of redemption and of um i mean, I mean it's it's the the story of redemption not of humanity but of one man one man who clearly had a very good cause to give up and did and uh, uh, through circumstances beyond his control went through a, a, a journey that brought him to fall in love again with uh, 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 with a sur you know this surrogate daughter um, which is why I thought uh, uh, I was a bit confused when the game started because, they were going out of their way to, uh, you know, remind us of what happened in the first game. And then it hit me. Oh, my God. There are people who are going to play this game who have never played the first game, who have never experienced all this. And they need to understand just how tenuous and awkward the beginnings of this adoptive fatherhood are at the beginning of it. Yeah. And uh, you really have to. God, you know, I can't imagine playing the second one without playing the first. There are people who are going to, but you really have to appreciate the weight of Joel's decision because that's what this entire game is predicated on, is that one moment of him deciding, no, I'm going to save Ellie and I'm not going to cure this disease. 
and uh, this is the domino the the bloody gruesome domino effect of that moment just yeah. played out over the next like five years well and and so and so that's why i thought uh i uh i i, I thought it was a bit weird that the first 10 minutes is basically a recap but but then again i mean uh i had just watched with my 12 year old daughter the entire six hour playthrough of the game uh, together uh, and and so that b because we knew the game was coming out and my 12 year old she uh, she can handle a bit of darkness you know and 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 uh, uh, she has an appetite for uh, you know heavy emotional content and all that but but this opening scene we could play a little bit of it um, uh, it takes place uh, 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 quote unquote four years before the 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 full game, but it takes place uh, immediately after the events of of the the first one, and it is so awkward and so dad like, and I could so see myself being this guy who who walks up and says this. Oh wait, we're playing two things at once. Here, let me kill that. There you go. How well you're helping out? It's good. Yeah. Tommy and I went out riding the other day and he uh <laughs> he told me a joke and I I thought about you. It's um Oh shoot, no, I forgot it. Uh something about a clock. <laughs> How do you Joel, it's uh it's pretty late and I gotta By the way. This is my hours. relationship yeah, with my father-in-law. Get out of your hair, just um, I, I want to show you something. <laughs> just give me. It's one so second. amazingly awkward and sweet and yeah. powerful. I so, liked it when Joel said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to, this? you know, film a few more episodes of Scam Nation when you got a second. Uh, <laughs> some folks call this thing here. Uh, so uh, uh, that's one of the things that they set up in the first game is uh, the uh, the you idea that um, you know he promises to teach her how to play okay. guitar someday, and here she is, 14, and this is this is like an audition to be her dad, and it's Promise so. Me. Unbelievable and poignant, and it, it, it induces it, 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 it creates a, a play oh mechanic where you actually strum on, on the oh. PlayStation controller and, and play different chords and stuff. I'm trusting you. And it feels really good to play it too. I've oh, seen yeah. people online playing like Johnny Cash is Hurt and stuff like that. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so here, we'll skip kind of the. Uh, the But I assume this is not an established song, but but is meant to be a song that he wrote for her, and is very. I think so. Yeah. Beat. There you go. Well, that didn't suck. <laughs> I'll take what I can get. So that's the seminal moment where it's 
sort of uh, established like, uh, okay, we did it, we made it. Here's no. here's a guitar. No, no, no. I don't know. Uh, I'm 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 gonna do my best to to be there for you, and and you know be the father figure that you've never had. Um, and then it smash cuts to four years later. Uh, she's now 18, doing 18 year old stuff, uh, having to go out on patrol and whatnot. And uh, uh, and you hear. Uh, what well, I don't know, gossipy stories of who was drinking and who was doing what, or uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and if, if you uh, if if you plus, he actually plays. Uh, uh, I did it for the Nookie by Limp Biscuit, so it's a neat little <laughs> a little, little Easter egg they, for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you got You got to do it. It's on New Game Plus only, I think. But so so, uh, d did you find yourself feeling much different seeing her as 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 a young adult uh, rather than as a teenager to be you know MacGuffin to be protected or? Uh, you know, well, that's I think that's part of the story, right, that you're supposed to because you're supposed to feel for her, whereas, you know, you're trying to protect her in the first one. In the second one, she really is uh, bucking against that a lot, saying, no, you don't need to protect me. And as you learn throughout the second game. You don't because she's a little murder ninja. I mean, well, and, but, but, but uh, you do. I mean, that's that's the entire point you, of the yeah. first game. Yeah, is 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 you, you, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of mutual rescuing that brings the two of them together, right? Right, right. Uh, but as you get into the second one, you know, you you really start to understand that uh, no, she has been forged in fire, and that she's just a. A, a maniac you know she, uh, you start to realize throughout the game uh, or you're supposed to anyway i think uh that uh that the themes that they're juggling with are look at what these people have become and you have to be careful not to stare into the abyss too long as all of this blood that gets spilled just really taints everything so there's this moment where, and I, I, I don't think they did this as much in the first game as they did in the second, where you switch perspectives. Uh, and what they do is they, they deny, oh, I, guess, I guess the first time they did it a few times. You start off as Joel's daughter, then you become Joel, and then later you become Ellie, and then later you become Joel saving Ellie, and that's pretty much it, right? As far as uh, I can I remember? I think so. It's been a long time. I haven't played it since it was originally released, so it's been a while, but yeah, it doesn't, I don't remember it bouncing around all that much with the exception of Joel and Ellie. Yeah, so, so, uh, but the, the, the second one, obviously, like, you get a lot more, like, you, you're, you're, you're Ellie, you're Joel, and then all of a sudden you're a character we've not met yet, uh, who you, you find out is called Abby, and you you don't even know what your mission is, but you know that you're pissed off that everybody else is too chicken to do it. And so you just you just go running into the city that that I think at this point we know that it's that it's Joel and Ellie living in. Uh, yeah, you know that it's Jackson, uh, Jackson, Wyoming, I believe. And uh, it's uh, but you don't really know why until that shoe drops. Right. And now like why she's after that she's actually after joel and uh when that happens it just oh it's such a sickening moment well one of many <laughs> that's that's the other thing is is you have the suspicion that 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 they're there for for uh, uh, not good reasons for joel <laughs> but yeah. uh, but but uh but they're pretty fast and pretty brutal on getting to the part we're and again we're in spoiler territory here. Um, uh, time. Abby brutally murders Joel in what the first hour of the game, I think. Yeah, and I figured that was going to happen because I think I had been spoiled or something like that. But it's also one of those things where it's like, okay, killing off that guy story wise immediately raises the stakes, and uh, it's a it's a bold move, right? So I thought. I wouldn't too surprised if they were going to do that, but the way in which they do it, they do it quickly and it is prompt and brutal. It's, it really hurts. So along those lines, uh, cause, cause, uh, I, 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 I chatted with our friend, uh, Rob asking how he felt about the reaction. And, uh, one of the things he commented was who oh boy, a lot of people didn't like that. We, 
that Joel died so fast. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but to me, uh, like, like chapter one. So, so it, the first story is about the redemption of a single man. And we'll get to what we think the second story is about, but like the moment he was redeemed and became whole at the end of episode one, um, it, it made me realize that uh, I, I just felt like every day after that was a gift. Uh, his relationship with Ellie was a gift. And, 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 and when it said four years later, uh, I kind of had a low grade, like, uh, at least four years, <laughs> you know, like, like at least like, <laughs> because once, once a character becomes whole, oftentimes they become disposable, right? <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, it, well, you had that ticking time bomb of the secret, and that's exactly what it was. Well, and, and, it's and just up the, waiting the, to go off. The secret being that, that Joel, uh, I mean me, straight up murdered a bunch of people <laughs> and stole the one thing that, that could redeem humanity. Uh, and they, they do a good job of closing the loop. I, I thought for... The, the a good chunk of the early part of the game that uh, Ellie was going to be uh, perceived as a prize to be won, like uh, some uh, like something to be hunted down and retrieved back for experimentation or whatever. But they inserted uh, I don't know about halfway through they inserted a t two years previous moment where she finds out that Joel lied to her and she also discovers the audio diary where they say it's it's not bad enough that she was taken it's that the only man who could have done anything with that information that she has in her body is now dead so like there's not even any value to her and 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 I thought that was an important part because it changed it changed the nature of the story, which is what, 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 what I'm what I'm getting towards. And um, uh, uh, well, 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 tell me this: when when that beat hit, how did that strike you? What 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 did you perceive they were trying to telegraph to us, the audience? Uh, to me, it seemed like uh, they were, and, and they do this on a number of levels through a lot of other like the more personal effects of that, like uh, who that doctor was and so forth. I don't know if we're going to spoil that yet, uh, but we, uh, we can go out of order, but, uh, out of order. You later find out that the doctor that was killed by me personally, Brian Brushwood, who also slaughtered unnecessarily the nurses and the orderlies uh, was the, was the, the father of uh, Abby the person who took a golf club to Joel's face and kills him in the, in the very first act of, of this story. Um, and, and so I guess, yeah, I guess it, the, the important thing, what I, what I took from that moment, uh, and I, and I'd love to hear your version, but in that moment, I felt like, Oh my God, this is not at all about anybody doing anything right. This is a story of, unnecessary vengeance forever because Abby had her dad killed. So she deliberately went and killed Joel. And now we have Ellie deliberately swearing to murder everybody, you know, kill bill style. Like she has a list now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it really uh, kind of recontextualizes uh, everything that Joel did because, you know, there's this, there's this heavy weight that he carries around and that you as the player carry around after playing the first one, knowing what he did, but you're like, well, it's done. Right. And they're happy together ish. They're living in this kind of post-apocalyptic uh, society where, you know, there's some semblance of, uh, of life again. If, if not and a paradise, so then at least something that resembled a pre-apocalyptic yeah. nightmare hellscape something uh, functional and it takes all of that it takes these blacks and whites these good and evil things and it just smears them all together and it says no 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 everything that you're feeling 
we're going to complicate that and we're going to make things nuanced and you are when this is over you're not going to have any easy answers and because every decision that is made from here on out is really ugly and you can't condemn anything really and you can't celebrate any of these behaviors aside from the fact that you learn when it's all over that this is a meditation on the cost of revenge and the cost of violence. Well, and, and okay, we'll get, we'll get to that, but you spend, I believe, the first two thirds of the game just full on playing Kill Bill, where it's like you've been oh, yeah. wronged. And mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. being excited to find those names and to know the, these faces. And and to and to jump in if y'all like, let's get started. Who's first? <laughs> yeah, and and it really makes you hate all of them. Uh, and something rewatching Lost right now, right? Uh, Lost has always been a show to me that one of the things that it did really well was make you love a character, and then turn around and make you hate that same character. And then again, redeem that character, or uh, take somebody who you hate. I, I and uh, spoiler alert for Lost: uh, uh, Sawyer is the character of the entire show. Like he is, he is, he is. He begins the first season as the most irredeemable piece of garbage, profiteering, uh, uh, soulless outcast and ultimately becomes you know your 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 completely redeemed favorite hero of of the entire thing whereas the uh, uh every, you know michael uh, wait, wait uh, fox is that his name uh, uh jack um is is pos oh, yeah. positioned as the leader who is a coward and unwilling to commit to to what it takes to be a leader a leader in all that stuff you know um yeah but and what uh, what Last of Us does is it it builds you up and you do this Kill Bill thing for the whole time and you hate Abby and you hate the, the wolves, the organization that they're a part of. And uh, and then it says, OK, now you're Abby. So this, and it this immediately is the sets out thing. humanizing her. So uh, when when I was chatting uh, uh, with Rob over text, uh, he said uh, he said, yeah, people really didn't like. Joel dying at the beginning and I was like oh no 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 that had to happen his arc was complete uh you know it's a, it's a gift we have to have a reason to to follow Ellie's story I I totally understand it and then and then Rob gave a cryptic response where he's like yeah there's there's other things people have problems with <laughs> and 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 I was like <laughs> uh, and 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 what's funny is uh, the moment I read that, I was like, you know, because I love complicated stories and I love feeling the anxiety of moral complication. Like the moment I read that, I was just like, oh, boy. <laughs> and it wasn't until <laughs> it wasn't until um, uh, they do an amazing job. Uh, so spoiler alert, um, you 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 win. Uh, you as Ellie win. You do the entire Kill Bill list except for one person. And just like except in for Bill. Just like in Kill Bill, the very last thing they could do to torture you is make him infinitely relatable, and and you're really regretful that he's about to get the five finger death fist uh, to to his heart or whatever. Uh, they make you play as Abby for a very long time, and they make you retroactively experience the the good and 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 wholesome and similar world of of the wolves to Jackson Wyoming um and i i i suppose this is the challenging amazing moment is that you've been playing the revenge game all this time and this and they force you to see that there's two sides to the revenge game and uh they they let you see that it is a endless perpetual cycle that leads nowhere and does no good and around the third act 
they they force you to experience and appreciate and love enough of of uh, Abby that everything becomes painful at the end, whichever yeah, character you're it, playing. It, it, it puts you uh, well, when you switch over to Abby, there are lots of flashbacks and everything. And so you see the relationship of her and her father, who you learn is the scientist. Right. As we said earlier, only that, after you uh, see could, him being like awesome and, 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 and yeah. positive. Yeah. And uh, you play as Abby going back through and you're in Seattle. Ellie's in Seattle at the same time. And you start the bodies start piling up all of the people that you killed as Ellie, you're experiencing this carnage as, oh my God, this maniac is killing my friends. But, and, and, and not uh, only that, you... But, but you experience them as friends because when you kill them as Ellie, they're, 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 ju they're just Kill Bill characters they're on monsters. the list. Yeah, they're, they're just on the list and so they gotta go and so you do the thing and then they you know they go back and then you find out all the joys and hopes and dreams and who was pregnant and who was in a relationship and 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 the complicated relationships of all of that um and and uh i can understand why somebody would find that too painful too torturous to to be happy with i loved it Every second, <laughs> every second of the torture I was being made to experience, I absolutely loved. Oh, yeah. And uh, it it's it you're walking through and you're encountering these characters and you're like, oh, you're about to die uh, from cordyceps. You're about to get the infection. And oh, you both get shot later. Oh, and. And as it, as it, as the two, as you start to catch up to where you were as Ellie, like the dog, the German shepherd, Alice, oh, and oh, you come oh, that, that was like, one of the best tricks because, because um, uh, in general, it's not fun to kill a dog in a game, but when you're Ellie, you never experience a dog as anything other than, than a horrific beast that eats your face. And you have to watch Ellie's face get beaten, getting eaten again and again and again, very quickly. Me and my 12 year old daughter got comfortable with like, like uh, screw you up yours, stab him in the neck, uh, the murder that dog, let's do this. And it, like dogs are things. And then they force you to meet them and play fetch with them and to understand that they're they're dogs that are loved by people, and that's what you've been doing all this time. And as Abby, you start walking through the trail of bodies, and that's when it really hit me, when you come across the dog, because I have a really hard time killing dogs in video games anyway. Sure. And in this one, it's like, you have to kill a lot of dogs with your bare hands. So word of warning... <laughs> to those of you who have a sensitivity to that kind of thing, you have to do it over and over. And then you come across the body of Alice and you know what's coming. It's immediately like, oh, no, you're here. You're in this moment. Remember all this stuff you did, you monster? You remember? Well, here it is. <laughs> this is the true genius of this game. And this is why I think of it as, and, and almost certainly I'm assuming this is going to be a trilogy. And this is why it's the empire strikes back of this because, um, uh, in star Wars, the empire was a cartoon and the rebellion was also a cartoon, but the good guys, uh, in empire strikes back, you saw a little bit of a glimpse of, of the, uh, complicated politicking that that goes into to things and and the hierarchy and all of that stuff. Uh, so so likewise, um, uh, episode one of The Last of Us is a story of redemption, not of the world, but of Joel. And it's a it's a message that says we're not here to save the world; we're here to save people. And then the second one by forcing you to by by first of all al allowing you to run rampant in a revenge fantasy 
but then punishing you for the second third or the second half of the game by by showing the other side and all the lives that are ruined by you you're the one who just did all of that stuff and then um that complicated oh. moment where you face off against you and you like 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 uh, th there there's that battle between Abby and Ellie where it's like like you have you don't have a choice you have to you're playing Abby you have to try to kill Ellie and so you have to hit that square button and take and take her down and then all of a sudden the camera swings around and suddenly you're like oh god no I'm Ellie I have to I have to I have to breathe I have to I have to get, get out of this and um and then that that very very complicated uh short third act where they give you that glimpse of the idyllic life of what it could look like to leave hate behind dina and ellie on a like 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 like, like the happiest version of, of of anything you could picture from lonesome dove uh dancing and 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 cooking and raising a baby together uh and, and they had they had alluded to this you know this was what they wanted it it was hers and i thought this was the brilliant part i thought the game was over yes exactly was done. exactly exactly and 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 you watch ellie uh, uh, talk to, to Tommy and, and Tommy's like, uh, no, 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 no. You've got to keep the revenge and the hate going. And she's like, well, I don't know. I mean, things are pretty good. And he's like, it was like, well, I guess I misjudged you or whatever. And then you, and you have to play as Ellie making what to the player feels like a very bad decision to continue yeah. and perpetuate that cycle of hate. It was sickening. It was one of those where it, it was so expertly directed and told to where Dina, it will at least get a sneak off in the middle of the night. And Dina's telling her, don't go. You've got everything you wanted. You've got your family right here. And Ellie just can't let it go. And it just makes you sick in the pit of your stomach because you just realize what a horrible decision it is and what this is, what's going to come of this. What? And, and it just makes it hurt. And what's funny is it's such a familiar moment to anyone who's seen a few Westerns where, where like, imagine you knew nothing and, and participated in nothing of before. Imagine the movie begins with a cowboy. Uh, I mean, it's, it's Shane, it's Logan. It's, 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 it's somebody who had stepped away from the game, but gets new information and realizes they have to, they feel a sense of duty. They, 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 they feel they have to finish what they started. And, and normally in a movie, that's the beginning and we cheer for where it ends up. And yeah, it's complicated along the way. But in this case, I've never wanted to decline a side quest more than in that moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was really painful. And it was uh, the complicated thing about it was that this was the whole game was about killing Abby. And when Ellie realizes she hasn't done it yet, she has this completely misguided emotion that, OK, this idea that this is going to put her ghosts to rest. This is going to make her feel better because she clearly is still suffering. She has profound PTSD. Oh, and they, and and thinks, they display okay. that really well. Like, like, like mm -hmm. in the middle of all the sweetness, she has a panic attack and you feel it. And they do a really good job of telling that that moment. Yeah. And, and she just she thinks, oh, this is going to make me better. And she's going to justify it by, well, I owe this to Joel. And I promised Tommy that I was going to make Abby pay. But really what it is, is, OK, this is why I still feel bad. So I'm going to uh, kickstart some more violence because Abby had let her go. You know, it was it was done. Abby walked away. And uh, so she goes back, she recoups, she gets her life back. She gets a better life, the life and, that and, she and, and by the way, wanted for each other. Abby, who knows that she holds some kind of cure in her, but that there's no way to unlock the secret. 
uh, uh, and because we've played enough as Abby, we we understand the mercy that that she shows uh, by by refusing to uh, 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 to kill her. But then and then and then uh, um, you know at this point, uh, man, uh, there's nothing I value more in a game or a story uh, or a book or a novel of of any variety then that moment when you realize you have no idea what's going to come next. But the moment Abby uh, 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 gets kidnapped by those slavers, like, it's like, I, 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 I it's it, number one, you know, no, nothing good comes next. <laughs> uh, and then number, yeah. number two, uh, Ellie does uh, uh, track her down. Uh, and again, you you play this weird both roles thing of a combat with yourself, which is such a good metaphor for what I think. I think that was the if I was going to guess what the genesis, the seed of this entire game is, is uh, what if you actually fought yourself and and believed both sides the entire time and so sure enough uh abby is 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 strung up and done uh you know, sitting on a pole being essentially crucified uh ellie can't just straight up murder her because that's not in in her and it wouldn't be in the hearts of the players either uh so she cuts her free but then also is like mm, now nah, i want to arm you and have this battle so that I feel good about murdering you. And Abby refuses. And then and then ultimately it's like, okay, fine, here we go. Um and, and, and then the most brutal knife fight I have ever seen in a movie, uh a TV show game. It was and and the whole and not just I mean the just the visceral action part of it was so incredibly painful. But then there was also the fact that you were just sick and you're just like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Which, which again, and it which just again, keeps going and going. It, it, it sounds like you weren't having a good time, but I love moral complication. And I, oh, yeah. I was flooded with endorphins of, of, of confusion fusion and not understanding how I should be feeling about any of this and rage and yeah I mean no I mean argh! and and uh, uh, right up to you know a couple of fingers get cut off in the middle of the battle and ultimately what was it was it, at, it it was Ellie who chooses to break the cycle like like by this point you figured out yeah this entire game is a meditation on the endless cycle of revenge and how useless and pointless it is and what it costs you. And then it's Ellie who walks away and lets Abby and, and Lev go. And, and then again, I, I loved it. A lot of people didn't like it. She goes home to an empty house. She's lost her love. She picks up a guitar that she can no longer play with her cut off fingers, she's lost everything. Uh, it was brilliant. Such, and the whole, the loss of fingers with the guitar, that was just salt in the wound. It, it was so painful and poignant. And it, uh, the whole thing was really just a testament to brilliant storytelling in that don't make your characters make the right choice. Make them make the interesting choice. Well, and and, and I, I that's what this did. I can't think of any game. Uh, is 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 that the scene that it ends on? It it pretty much much ends there, right? Like, uh, yeah, she can't play the guitar, and then it shows her leaving the farm and walking into the woods, and that's the end. So credits roll. In in that regard, um, uh, okay, so. It's another magic trick. So, okay, so if if I'm trying to deconstruct the brand of The Last of Us, it's a series of magic tricks. The first episode successfully did the magic trick of making me believe that it was about saving the world, and it turned out at the very end to be about saving Joel. 
Um, and this one did the magic trick of making me believe that it was about the satisfaction of revenge. And it took a longer time to get there, but it revealed the truth that revenge is a useless, endless cycle that yields nothing and, and, and only misery. Um, I, 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 it, it, it really, I mean, I, I can't wait to see the third, like, like fool me once. And then, you know, but they, they fooled me twice. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it's, I loved it. I, and, and, and I loved it with my kid, you know? Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. Uh, the game, uh, I will say that is a straight up masterpiece, not just one of the best games of this uh, generation, but one of the best games full stop, because we keep talking about the story, which is where it really shines. Uh, but the gameplay was a lot of fun as well. Uh, I really enjoyed it and it was paced so, uh, brilliantly. It, it helped a lot that, uh, I understood the game mechanics much more, uh, like I, the, the first game, um, took a while to train Brian that a stealth game has to be played like a stealth game. And then, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but they did introduce some elements in this one where there were some frustrating moments and I was just like, screw it, just going to run. <laughs> and then, and, and, and it worked sometimes, <laughs> you know, I, I thought there was a nice balance between like sneaking, running or killing everyone. And, Cause there were some where, I successfully navigated the minefield that they have set up, this little chessboard of enemies, uh, without uh, triggering any of them. Some of them I would just go through and murder all of them. Some of them I would alert one of them, and as I often play Hitman, the alarm goes off, and it's like, all right, now this is happening. <laughs> Let's go. I, I found and then it. other times it was just like, okay, I'm running. I'm going to find a way to go. Just go, 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 go. And uh, I thought there was a nice balance of that. I will say that uh, if you're getting ready to play this game, uh, uh, they, they introduce a couple of different dynamics. Uh, there was, in the first game, there was a lot of moving things around and cooperative lifting things to get up on ledges and all that stuff. This one, there's there's a lot more, you know, squeezing through corridors. Um, but the uh, uh, the melee uh, dynamic of of the dodge and the getting ready to figure out you know are they going to attack are they gonna, are they going to swing once or swing twice how many dodges before i counter move or whatever i did i did a lot more melee in this and a lot less um uh, 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 ammo hunting which which i find relatively tedious especially because i don't i i, I don't dig aiming and firing with my thumbs mm. cuz thumbs are dumb and mouse and keyboard is the only one true way um but uh, uh but but uh, so two two questions uh number 1 um did we love it absolutely yes. absolutely I rave about it yes uh number 2 is it better than the first one uh, I think so. Yeah, oh, uh, I really do. We we didn't even take a moment for the shining star of the the number one scene in the entire thing is uh, the birthday moment when they discover the museum and you get uh. in the space capsule. I, dude, I, I was crying, just just crying the entire time. It was it was because that was the best trick the devil ever pulled is killing Joel and then letting us go back to him over and over to, and, and there's a complicated backstory with Joel and, and how Ellie feels about having been lied to or whatever. But, but, but man, oh, man. oh and, 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 you know, she'll every so often she'll pick up that guitar, play a little bit of that yeah. cheesy song that he made up. And that did. recurring <laughs> motif of the guitar, but that, uh, uh, the, uh, the space museum where they climb into the capsule and everything, that was the giraffe moment, right? Yes. Of this, uh, of this episode. But they gave us a, uh, they, they did a great job of giving us a, a, if not two on the nose, uh, a, a similar moment with the free <laughs> yeah. zebra uh, with that on the yep. Abbey side or whatever. I mean, this game tortures you. Uh, I think that's the best way to put it is um, this game tortures you. That will sound to, some ears, uh, either as a compliment or a detriment. And for me, it's the highest compliment because, uh, it, 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 uh, I, I, I've always wished for a game 
Uh, okay, so the easiest thing to do is scare people, which is why video games, first emotion they were able to evoke is uh, fear, and Doom had all the jump out scares or whatever. Uh, second is to make you laugh, and then we have the, you know, the Lucas Arts scum engine run games where everybody's doing a lot of really good writing, or, or maybe maybe I've got that reverse. Maybe laughter's first and then scaring, but to make somebody feel agonized and fear and just crying for real characters, my goodness, uh, 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 they they won the game. I mean, it's and it's. And it's complicated, you know, it's so the emotions, again, are just so uh, nuanced and uh, you just don't feel good about anything. As uh, as Allison put it a minute ago, she said, oh, so you're going to go talk about that horrible, awful game. And I was like, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and it's so funny because it's like, 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 uh, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, here's all you need to know. Did you read The Road? and think that's a good oh, book yeah then guess what you have a new favorite video game <laughs> yeah. do you do you like the road do you like stabbing people in the throat i, I mean well, well, oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 again it's it, at some point it becomes wonderfully joyless which is a very weird thing to say about a game and a, a, a game mechanic um it's it's great and i look forward to where they go next um because here's here's what I mean. There's plenty of room in this world to go from here. Um, the first one started off grandiose and became small, uh, a, a small but emotionally powerful thing. Uh, the second one started off as a revenge tale that became a scathing indictment of revenge. Um, the I third wonder, one will be a battle royale with lots of loot boxes uh, <laughs> and and custom early skins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I unlocked Joel with the golf club sticking out of his head. Yeah. Um, no, uh, highest recommendation. Uh, I I'm with you. I liked it. Uh, it was it was. Let me put it this way. Uh, this is a better crafted. It uh, the the game mechanics were more fun. For me this time than it was the first time first time i found the 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 uh, uh i don't know the the cover mechanics a little bit tedious for and a little bit too more too much poking around for stuff i thought the sure. um uh i thought the character interactions were fantastic every character is so well written so well expressed so well animated uh Everyone. the world felt alive i mean it's just a better game it's a better game than the first one yeah. full stop yeah, it, it uh, oh God, it, I, I don't even know if I want to see a third one, honestly. I, I feel like there is more to this story to tell, uh, but God, it is so good and so hard. Okay, what like, if, I, what if I told you the third one was titled, subtitled Dream Warriors? Okay, yeah, well, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. With Dawkin? Uh, Can we get Dawkin? Can Dawkin do the score? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, um, is what else is there to say uh, on, uh, on this one? Yeah, uh, one of the one of the other things that I noticed was uh, the uh, and I know this is just a little tidbit that kind of uh, to put on at the end, but the level design was pretty ingenious in that the areas they were open, you felt like you could go but ultimately they're going to get you to where you need to be or to where they want you to be right they'll funnel you and there was a you you might get frustrated every now and then trying to find like an opening or something you're supposed to crawl through but everything feels really open but it's really just nudging you going okay over here now go over here and experience this and now go over here and it was done so elegantly and and it was also everything was set up for uh, when it needed to be uh, brilliant, tense combat uh, or uh, nail biting uh, uh, stealth. Yeah. The uh, 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 did did you mind the moments where it took you, let's say, longer than three minutes to figure out where you were going? And then it just very gently said, eh, press this button, get a hint. 
And then it's like, I, you know, I, I, I loved yeah. all of that. That was great because I thought it was right when I would start to get frustrated. And the few times that I did, there were a couple of times it would say, you know, and it would have a character go, hey, uh, uh, we should go over here. Yeah. You know, and uh, the only times that I ever missed it was when there was a space to crawl through. Yes. Like if you had to go under something or, 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 or hop something up was up vent. above. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, but outside of that, uh, 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 if you think this is the story of Ellie and Joel part two, then uh, I can understand you being frustrated. Um, but if you go in remembering what made the first one great was that it was a magic trick and that this is really, uh, uh, you know, just a just a meditation on on the uselessness of, of revenge, then then I, I, I think you're going to love it, man. I, I, it's it's very, very good. The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, one one of the greatest games of all time. Full stop. Yeah. All right. Well, here let's uh, uh we'll wrap it up right here. Uh, we hope you guys like uh you know Jason and Brian talking about games. Yeah, because we never mention games uh, on Modern Rogue or anything. Yeah, so, we, we uh, never reference you them. Know. That's a, that's that's our gimmick. <laughs> is that uh is that that's what we do. <laughs> all right. See you guys. <laughs>